<sighs> so JPS is ruining my life. <laughs> These power cuts, man. If we don't get some solar set up soon, we're gonna be in some real problems. We're in a weird paradox where we're trying to save money so that we can buy the equipment we need to actually be fully off-grid, while still also paying really high electric bills. I mentioned solar being our goal in an earlier video, but not just because it'll be nice to have or just because it'll save us some money. We've got some seriously frustrating issues that it needs to solve. I mean, what's the point in paying for a service that just randomly stops working sometimes? Apparently that's just the reality of being on the grid in rural Jamaica. Let's just break down the core issues and talk about how we're going to fix it. Alright, let's get the obvious stuff out of the way. We're tired of high electric bills and we want to be more self-reliant. But the real problem... The grid here in the countryside is kind of unstable, which is really weird to say. Like, power cuts happen out of nowhere. Like, you could be good for weeks and then lights out. And it's always at the worst times. You know how terrifying it is when the power goes out when you're in the shower? Like, <laughs> it feels like a horror film. And then you gotta wonder, is this gonna last half an hour or is it gonna last for half the week? And this is what was going on before last year's hurricane. It got worse. Like when the hurricane hit, I was still in the UK and my family had no power for like two weeks straight. I was stressed out of my mind trying to reach them because it's like, imagine knowing that they might need help and you can't even really check in. Plus I'm pretty sure the transformer is still damaged because the power to the house is inconsistent. Our washing machine is pretty much screwed because of this, so we're hand washing clothes until that gets fixed. To be fair, we're lucky it was just that. Like, imagine if the fridge went. I mean, I'm not blaming JPS for a hurricane, obviously, but it's like, this kind of stress? This is why we need solar so bad. All right, let's talk about solutions, because there's no point in just complaining. To start things off, we got one of those mini power stations. We knew going full solar was going to be really expensive, so we at least needed a backup. So we bought an EcoFlow Delta II and one of their 160 watt solar panels. And neither of them are here yet. I actually got it before leaving London, and none of my stuff has cleared through customs in Jamaica yet. If anxiety was a person, it'd be punching me in the face right now. Anyways, there's loads of different options for these kind of units. Jackery, Blue Eddy, Anchor, and they've all got their own different options. But this one made the most sense because it was in budget. At the current time of recording, I think you can pick these two up for £700 total, and it can power a fridge. Keeping food from spoiling is kind of one of our main concerns. Plus, obviously, it'll keep our phones charged, and if we really wanted to, keep the internet going. Now, to be fair, it's only like 1.8 kilowatt hours, so it's not going to be doing everything at once. And it's definitely not running a whole house. We use like 9 kilowatt hours a day between the five of us, so no chance. Now, when it comes to a long-term solution, I'm kind of torn. And not even really in a logical way. Now, one option is just simply getting a bigger power station. Something like an EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra terrible name, <laughs> or an Anchor Solix F3800. Honestly, this option sounds kind of perfect. They're modular, they're expandable past 10 kilowatt hours, and they're dead simple to install. Just get an electrician to install a manual transfer switch and then plug it in, and then yeah, your house has power. You can choose whatever panels you want to pair with it as long as they're compatible. No listening to like a long, boring sales pitch from a solar company. No paying for an entire team of people to come install stuff. They just seem way simpler. But there's a catch. There's always a catch. <laughs> Actually getting one into Jamaica? Good luck. I mean, technically, yeah, you could do it. Right, imagine I could actually justify spending five grand US on that EcoFlow unit. Bear in mind, that's still just the base unit before you actually spend money on expanding or upgrading. All right, cool. So now let's add Jamaican import fees. Electronics duties, 20%. General consumption tax, 15% of the overall amount. Some random just because fees, they'll probably be there, or at least that's what it feels like. By the time customs is done shaking me down, I'd be dropping an extra two grand just to get it here. Yeah, I guess a full setup from a local company just makes way more sense. Pretty sure for like 10 to 15 grand, you can get the whole package depending on your power needs. Solar panels, batteries, an inverter, professional installation, and the most important part, a company to call when something inevitably goes wrong. I mean, let's be real. If my DIY setup dies, then I'm gonna be out here at 2 a.m. watching YouTube tutorials trying to figure it out. The fact that I see that as a fun challenge is kind of concerning. Like, I'd probably enjoy actually trying to wire up my own battery setup, but I don't know how much I trust myself around anything high voltage. It's honestly just a whole different commitment. If I went that route, then I'm gonna be spending months on extra research, ordering parts separately, and then pretending to be an electrician when I'm not one. <laughs> Which leads me to my next worry. Hoping that a real electrician can understand my weird custom setup when something goes wrong past my skill level. And yet, my brain just refuses to accept the easy path. Like honestly, I just wonder, like, why am I like this? 
I actually like the idea of a fully custom setup that I have to figure out, like sourcing my own batteries, tweaking things, just fully understanding how every little bit works. But let's be real, I'm probably gonna have to go with whichever one makes the most sense. It doesn't really seem like the greatest idea to pay more to struggle. <laughs> Then after I do more research, I'm going to have to figure out when we can even afford it. Overall, I really just wanted to rant because this is driving me insane. Like, the power cuts, the costs, and the chaos is just giving me a headache. It's funny though, because I can imagine a certain amount of people thinking that this would put me off living here, but, but nah, this is just like... It's just a different set of challenges living in a different part of the world, I guess. Anyways, what would you guys do? Local setup? Portable units? I guess it really depends on where you guys live. Just let me know in the comments. But yeah, I'm gonna go finish up some work. But if you wanna see more of what we're up to here, then go ahead and click this link.